Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to In Spirit Communications Talk Radio, where your voice is heard. I'm your host, Danella Martin Braddock. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone, to In Spirit Talk Radio. Um, how's everybody out there, the panelists? What's up? Hey. hey. <laughs> All righty. We're going to jump right into things, um, and uh, we're going to find out who's with us because, um, once again, um, this is uh, Block Talk Radio, In Spirit Talk Radio, where anything can happen. So uh, we actually had a show last week with... Uh, no technical difficulties, and we're so happy about that. And now I just heard something else. About, I'm really, really loving blogs. Did I speak too soon? You might have. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I did speak too soon. I am wondering why I uh, hear myself right now. Okay, that's bizarre. Okay, yay. Okay, anyway, note to self, do not have the uh, the window open while doing the show. So anyway, we're going to jump right into things. Do you tweak your religion? Um, basically, we already know, if you ask a lot of people, they will say that religion is a part of their lives, you know, a, a, an integral part of their lives. As a matter of fact, usually if you say that religion is not a part of your life, people usually give you the side eye. You know, they'll give you an eyebrow, and um, basically you'll look like, you know, you're Satan's child. But, um, you know, so people <laughs> say that, you know, religion is a part of their lives, um, but, you know, a lot of people are, are quite, you know, bold about admitting that they kind of tweak their religious beliefs a little bit. So, um, you know, it kind of made me wonder how much of our religion is truly true to Scripture and how much of it has simply become cultural. And thinking of religion as something that's purely cultural and not religious, actually it was kind of a new idea to me. I honestly didn't think about the concept until I lived in Japan. And just briefly, um, you know, um, most of the Japanese population is uh, Shinto and Buddhist. And, you know, the religions kind of overlap. And a lot of the cultures, you know, the traditions in their religion, you know, um, are very ancient and part of those religions. And they do these things without thinking. Like, you know, for example, when they go to, you know, a temple and, and you know, pray for something, if you ask, you know, us, uh, you know, us, us Americans, you know, we ask a lot of questions. We go, oh, well, why do you do that? And they often don't know because there's not really like a, a, a book of scriptures that they, you know, like if you ask a Christian, why do you do this, they may refer to a Bible passage. They didn't really have that there. They just said, oh, it's just, you know, what we do. And it kind of made me think of like here in America, like you've got the Christians who go to church only on Christmas or New Year's or Easter, and, um, you know, basically they kind of just do things because that's what you do. You know, on Easter you get your best outfit and, you know, you get your pretty little patent leather shoes and your little Easter hat, and you go to church. Um, so, you know, it just made me think that, wow, you know what, religion can be cultural. And what does that mean when it's largely cultural? But anyway, I'm going to close my hole right now. I don't know how appropriate that sounds, especially in a religious show. But, um we're going to move on to the panelists, okay? And hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. <laughs> All right, Everleen. Everleen hey. here. Okay, oh, my How are you? you? Hi, Everleen. You stood. You stayed up late. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> hey, hey. Ooh, hey. Where are you I'm trying, trying to hang wood. tonight? <laughs> I All promise right, well, Evelyn, I would. I know, I know. You took your nodos and your Red Bull. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. How's right. everybody doing? Good, good. Good. All right, so, all right. So, Evelyn, let's let's start off with you. Quick round table. Uh, sixty seconds or or two minutes, whatever. Sixty seconds. What say you about religion, cultural or religious? Um. I would probably have to roll with the cultural program, maybe because it's like um, 
you should just be exposed to so many things, or it just depends on your faith and how much it, you know, how much uh, influence you have on it from the beginning. Um, like for myself, um, I guess I started off in like the Christian faith, so to speak, but as I started to gain knowledge about other things, um, I just became more open and receptive and kind of free-spirited about it and gained some knowledge off of anybody's religion, actually, as long as it applies. So I would probably have to say cultural. Okay. All right, Brother Mike. What up, Brother Brother Mike. <laughs> We, brother Mike, hello, Brother Mike, what happened? Okay, well, we're going to move. We'll find it. We'll find him. Never fear. Okay. All right, what's up, uh, Pastor Arthur Barnes? Hey, what's going on? We got the good Reverend hey, aboard. What's up, good Revy Rev? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, I would have to say in a lot of different different faiths, um, more or less, it's a lot to do with um, culture. Um, if you grew up in, you know, Christian home, a lot of, you know, a lot of people grew up in Christian homes and, you know, later on they, they may stray from that or they may stay within the path, but I think a lot of it is culture. Be it you come from a Christian background, Jewish background, or Buddhist background, I think it's more cultural than anything. Okay, now I have to ask you some. I'm just curious, and I expect to hear from you a lot tonight. With you being a pastor, how do you feel about that? Or is it too early to jump into that? I mean, we could jump into how do I feel about religion in general? How do you feel about, you know, the 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 belief that maybe with with a lot of people that religion is basically cultural? Do you think that's a problem? Is that something that we should aim to correct or do you think it's it's okay? Well I don't I don't look at it as a problem because um for one, you know, growing up in whatever home you're in, your your parents more or less are the first, you know, more or less teachers and pillars of whatever you believe. They're your first really your, your first um I would say when you look to your parents you look to them as if they're God. So, um, what you're brought up around, um, often kids portray those things or act differently from what they're they're taught. Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, uh, do we have Dominique on board, Miss Paramore? Hey, hey. Hi, Hi girl. <laughs> from Cleveland, our favorite city. Shout out. <laughs> um, well, I, um, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm playing Everlene's role today because I'm literally sleepwalking. So, you know, if I say anything <laughs> profound, it is literally by accident. Um, but I just think that it has to. It's like driving, you know. When you are not a licensed driver and you're learning how to drive, you know, you're just watching what everybody else is doing. And you'll see people break the law and you'll think that it's legal. You know, you'll think that it's permissible. You know, you'll see people roll through a stop sign. You'll see people turn without their blinker. Um, and it's not until you have reached an age where it becomes important to you to know those laws because now you're faced with the challenge of qualifying, you know, for your own license where you begin to question um, why they make the decisions to disregard certain rules and why they make the decision to abide by certain rules. Um, and I think that that's religion as well. I mean, when you're a child, everything is, you know, it's your environment, everything you know, from the way that you dress to the way that you talk, you know, people are teaching you or shaping, you know, the culture, your your the environment that you're in is shaping the person that you you ultimately are, are living out. And I think religion is that same way. But then you reach a point where oh <laughs> then you reach a point where, you know, it becomes important to you to define those boundaries and those limitations or what I call your convictions for yourself and 
when those convictions become personal, that's when I think you make that shift from religion just being cultural to it being um, something that's just a part of who you are. Okay, wow. Okay, interesting, interesting. Very, very powerful. Um, And I didn't really, you know, look at it that way, but absolutely, absolutely. All right, Brother Mike, where is Brother Mike? I know, right? We are trying to find him. Okay, you know, we've got two callers, and um, I'm just going to jump in there real quick and uh, see what's going on and see if maybe if it's one of our long-lost panelists. And if not, then it's an in-spirit talk radio caller, and we definitely want to hear from them. All righty. Hi, you're live on the air in Spirit Talk Radio. Hello. 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 Yes, you're on the air. Hello. Yes. Hi. Oh, this is Deacon John McMahon. How are you? Oh, a deacon. Yay. We've got a (laughs) representative deacon on board. I am excited. I love religious people. Hi, sir. Don't call me sir, Donella. You know me personally. Do not call me sir. (laughs) You you know, I love to call people sir. I call everybody sir and ma'am. Okay, all right. Look, you were supposed to act like you didn't know me. Anyway, (laughs) Mr. Deacon, hi. Look, we have to act like we have a lot of listeners here, and you know that we're just you know extremely popular right now. So, (laughs) Mr. Deacon, your your thoughts and comments. Um. I know that a lot of people tweak their religion, and I and I understand it from a um, secular perspective. But um, from my perspective, um, it's it's not something. I feel like it's a false belief in that if you're going to say you are something, if you're going to label, whether it's self labeling, if you're going to label yourself a Christian, a Buddhist, or a Muslim, then it's something that you should delve be a wholeheartedly involved in. It's not something you should skirt around the issues with. Um, if you look at a lot of the other religions in the world, the way that the way that they're practiced, especially um, uh, the Jewish religion and especially uh, like Muslim religion, they stick to the tenets specifically. They know the history. They know every, all of the ins and outs. Whereas if you ask a uh, basic Christian what they believe or why they do the things they do, very often you find that they don't know. And I, I find that, personally, I find that troubling. I find it troubling that somebody claims the mantle of religion and doesn't, uh, and doesn't uh, really understand what it is they're claiming. So, yes, a lot of people do. Do I tweak my religion? No, not at all. I do my best to live what I, what I, what, um, I share with others and to live what uh, is preached from the pulpit and to live you know the um the what the bible what the, uh the bible teaches okay you know can i jump in there for a minute now sure. i know some christian no i i understand what you're saying and i agree um definitely with you know a lot of it being cultural with a lot of people but i know a lot of jewish people who will admit that they are just culturally jewish but they don't go you know they don't go to temple you know they don't really pray and it's right. just, you know, once again, the way they were brought up, they identify themselves as Jewish, but they're not a practicing Jew. Right. And I even know some Muslims, believe it or not, I know some Muslims, and I'm talking about, like, Muslims, the couple of people I spoke to, they happen to be from Somalia, and they're, you know, they're here, and they've got the whole, you know, the Muslim garb and everything. They cover themselves, every, everything. They're identifiably Muslim. And some right. of them eat pork. You know, and and stray, you know, and, and for them.